Okay, so I'm going to try to start removing the door handle. And to do that, the only access real, uh, really here is this little opening, which is not that big. And I don't have huge hands either. So uh, the first thing to deal with is this, I believe it's a, a water diverter. I don't know what else to call it. But uh, anyway, let's shine some, some light in here. And um, you can see part of it here. And if we look inside the door, there is one screw there that is this one. And there's, you can see, there's another one in there, which is this one here. So I really don't see anything else in there that would um, secure this in place. So let me remove those and uh, we'll see if we can extract that thing from the uh, inside of the door. Okay, so let's start with this one. It's the regular Phillips head um, screw here. And the other one is this one. So let's hope this thing doesn't just fall in there and uh, try to hold it while, while I do this. Okay, so both are out. Let's see if there's anything we can do to remove it without destroying the door. Okay, so yeah, that that is the, the only things that um, Secure this thing in place and I shouldn't keep it from coming out. There we go. There we go. Next, what I have to do is disconnect. There should be a rod in there for the, yeah, there it is. And that is the one for the. Actually, that uh, actuates the mechanism. So you can see when I'm pushing down on this one, that moves down and opens the door. And then there's two nuts that have to be removed. The one at the very back there. And this one, this one is very easy. And again, there's hardly any room for your hand in there. so. What I learned a while back is to release this mechanism by loosening these one, two, and three screws. And all it, it does, it lowers this about an inch to two inches. And that gives you even more room to get your, your hand and uh, your tools in there and start removing those nuts. Okay, so let's try to remove these. I'm hold this from, from this rod here just to make sure it doesn't travel too far. Once you do that, then you can push this one down just enough to give you a little more room in there, which is really nothing. <laughs> But trust me, when you're dealing with such a small opening here, every little bit helps. Now, to disconnect this rod here, you have these little clips at the end of this retainer. And basically all you have to do, sometimes a screwdriver, which we have flathead one, I don't have one handy, allows you to do this. You want to release the, uh, the retainer and it rotates a little bit out of the way, ideally. And then you drop it inside the door for safekeeping. So, and yeah, you can 
hide it in a little bit so you have more room to actually get your hands in there. Well, your hand. Yeah. And uh, so this guy, the very end there, is going to be next. And of course, you want to have your magnet handy in order to remove the pieces that uh, may drop inside the door. You may also want to remove this cover plate because then you gain access to the inside of the door a lot easier and uh, you can get your magnet in there and fish out any small parts that uh, went missing. So this is the guy that we have to disconnect next. And I believe the clip So let's see what I've been taught here. I think I see a clip in here, but I don't know. So what I'm trying to do is there's a retainer here. You can see the, the retainer there a little bit. And uh by pushing it up and pushing it back a little bit usually releases but may have to get this one all mangled I think it moved a little bit there there see if this yep so that one released now, and I'll show you the, uh, the clip a little later, more detail, show you how that works. But anyway, anyway, success. I remove the, uh, you have wires here from the uh, power door lock, but you see the rod now is, is free. And here's a clip, and it just went down into the uh, safe deposit box at the bottom of the door. So this one is free now. Now I have to address the two nuts on the top. And uh, we'll do that next. This is so much fun. So to remove this guy, you're going to need a number 11 socket. I guess you could use a small wrench in there, too. I don't have one 11, but, uh, oh, and by the way, you can, of course, use small ratchet. So let me try that, see if that would, if that's going to help some. Yep, that works. Once you loosen that guy a little bit, you can remove it easily. And that one can be a little bit of a challenge. Why? Because there's no way to get the socket in place. It's just too close to the... Uh... Let me show you. This is very hard to get to. You have to use something like um, an open end uh, wrench to get to it. The reason being is because of the angle of the door. This thing is like almost butted against the, uh, the back wall here. So Chevy engineers made sure that it was going to be a pain to, uh, to remove. We try to use a different type of wrench to get to it. I did find an 11 millimeter wrench. That's why you want as much room in here so you can get your hand in.
And this is gonna take um, a long minute. Because that's part of the fun. So you don't want the fun to be over too quickly. See if I can get my fingers in there. Yes, I can. And make your bets. Do, am I going to drop this little nut? What are the odds? 10 to 1. Oop. Oh no. False alarm. Oops. No false alarm. live here from my garage look at that no nuts wait let me uh, put that into different terms so the rod is disconnected the nuts are off now this one should and I want you to pay attention as what if you want to do, if you have to do this job to replace, fix, repair, whatever, your door handle. Make sure that you pay attention as to where things are. Of course, I'm holding the camera with one hand so I cannot. Let me put this down for a second. Okay, so what I did is I basically pushed that rod out of the way a little bit. I don't know, can you see it? And uh, carefully, and it's gonna get caught again behind a few more things. So I'm gonna have to keep pushing it so I can actually, there we go, I think it's moving. Yes, no, there we go. This rod that I'm, with that little, where you go? Oh, with that uh, little pin there that I was telling you about, uh, I had to remove the, the retainer so it would release from the uh, lever. It's connected here to the to the handle, and I'll go into more detail in a few. You can see it there behind. brackets and there it comes and there you have it so you know between uh, pausing the camera and uh, getting some tools and, and all of that I've been here for about I would say 15 20 minutes so this is not the end of the world when it comes to removing the door handle it's just a lot of work, but it is doable. I just did that for you. And the, the reason I wanted you to uh, keep, you know, an eye on that rod is because you want to make sure once you, uh, you're going to have to reuse the, uh, the rod for the replacement handle that you're going to be using or to reassemble this one if you were able to fix yours. And this one just basically rotates out of there and that's it. That's why I didn't want you to uh, just yank it out of there because once it drops, you will lose uh, the um, picture of how this was connected. And that can be a little bit of a, of a headache. Again, it's not the end of the world or anything like that. There was some kind of a retainer that it's um, rusted away. As you can see here, it's just a little remnant of it. So I'm gonna see, I probably have one of those to uh, to replace the one that was here originally. I don't even know how that would, I guess it just goes around the, uh, the lever here and then it kind of 
locks into place. Yes, that's probably what it is. So it keeps this rod in place because otherwise, when you were reinstalling it, it would just probably fall off. So anyway, let's go to um, the workbench next. Again, I had to use this. I had to use um, an 11 millimeter socket. And of course, the uh, open end wrench small ratchet for the uh, front nut and those are here so keep everything organized so you know where how to put it back together and one last look in here it really helps to uh, drop this out of the way a little bit we're gonna go over the details as to how everything reconnect uh, reconnects once you're ready to uh, put the, uh, the new handle in I'm going to remove this next and that is going to give me access to the bottom of the door so I can fish out the uh, the retainers that uh, that I put in there for safekeeping. All right, I dropped them in there, but uh, you'll do the same thing, trust me. So that is next. Okay, so these are, uh, what size are these? Eight? Yep. Wow. Most of them are pretty loose. Oh, wow, wow, look at that. Fortunately, these are 11 millimeters. And I happen to have socket handy so that is fantabulous oh, come on seriously GM seriously GM there well that was fascinating Look at that, that looks like it's been replaced. Very nice, very nice. Let's see if we can find other, if we can find the uh, retainers that I put in here for safekeeping. Let me get a magnet. This one here is gonna allow me to go fishing. And the first customer of the day is this little retainer, which is good because we're going to need it. I think I may have a couple extra ones somewhere, but you never know. And where's the other piece that I stored in here? There so carefully. There it is. And actually, I, I bought a while back some replacements, and I'll give you all the info in case you need to get these. They're, they are available, fortunately. So, anyway, let's bring the uh, door handle to the workbench. Let's have a look. Okay, so what I like to do is, this one's pretty clean, but regardless, I like to give all these screws uh, and little retainers and clips a good bath in Evaporust. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, of course. I don't, I don't have that, and uh, but I just like to. Uh, share whatever products I use, whether I make money or not, I don't care about that. I just like to uh, share the information with you guys to save you some time and hopefully some money as you uh, work on your vehicle. There are other, other products. This one is, as it says here, super safe. I've been using it for years. 
And uh, why is it do so dirty? Because they'll call me cheap, but I like to um, reuse this stuff. It doesn't go bad, it just gets dirty. Up to a point, you know, you have to replace the, uh, the product, but it works just as well when it's dirty as when it's clear. So I'm gonna let this thing sit in here for, um, for a good minute and you know, I'm gonna go and have some breakfast and uh, I will. I will report back in a couple of hours and we'll go over the details as to how to replace the, um, the door handle. I'm gonna use this one my buddy Bob gave me. Actually, he gave me two. One, the other one was totally messed up, but I was able to salvage the, uh, the spring and move it over to this one. This one is in fine condition. So again, don't throw these things away because you can always use parts. And I'm gonna clean this, this rod too. And this one is gonna be in here. And I'm gonna see if I have a, a, a retainer for this part just for, so it doesn't come loose and fall off or something, so. But anyway, more details on that a little later. And I'll give you a demonstration on how this little part here gets connected to the uh, to the latch assembly. Okay, so the important thing with these retainers is to make sure you, you have the right one because there are, that's for left, here we go. There's a left hand, as I call it, and then you have the right hand. And you have to determine which way in this case, I'm going to need the the right hand, um, sorry, like this retainer because the rod is going to be jetting out in this direction. So if you only have one and it happens to be the wrong orientation, the moment you put that in, it would be pointing, the uh, retainer part would be pointing in the wrong direction. Does that make sense? So, once I reinstall it, I will use this one because that's the way that the uh, the rod kind of comes out of the uh, of this um, lever here, and um, so yeah, that'll work. Okay, so even though this one is for the passenger side door, the principle as far as connecting the rod is one and the same. So again, this lever is going to be pointing toward the, uh, the skin of the door. And uh, there's not a, lot, not a lot of room there to, um, to do what is necessary to make the clip work properly. So let me remove this clip. This clip is brand new. I'll provide a link to where I, I got it. Um, you can buy, these are not expensive, okay? You can buy them It's a pack of two, I think, for about three to four bucks. But you know how I am, I like to save money. And uh, so I bought a package of 50 for like $6. Uh, am I ever gonna need 50 of these things? Probably not, but hey, you never know. It was a bargain. So I. I got them and I wanted to see if they were all identical and these are just for Chevys and uh, yeah, they are. So this is the one that, and I can always reuse it. This one came with a car. This is the option. They are basically identical, just the shape is a little different. So it doesn't really make a huge difference in my opinion. Now the way this works, 
you see here there's a couple of holes one is for retaining this clip this clip has a little a little tab there that sticks up so to install it this clip will go toward this bigger hole here the second one and basically once it gets to it snaps in place and it keeps this pretty much firmly in there there's there's no way that it's gonna come out unless you lift it like i just did unhook the clip and you take it out of there okay so once you're ready to reconnect the rod to open the to be able to open the door what you want to do is get this thing installed and it'll it'll lock once it gets to this point now this can be a little confusing and you know i'm no expert when it comes to this i mean this piece has a channel and logic would make you think that the uh this part of the end piece here slides in there and it and it would and it would stay in place however what i what i like to do and again this is just my my take on it let's get this thing installed all the way you can see there the sides of the channel from the other side which would be facing the uh the back side of the door so you cannot really see once this is in place you cannot see this side so then you know the rod once you get the handle inserted back into the uh, the door the hand the um the rod would be hanging here and what i do is i get it into position like this so it's over the uh, uh first hole here where you see part of the channel and again this is tight quarters so it takes a little bit of of work but you can still get your fingers in there and basically push it all the way in and then that is there to stay now even if after what for whatever reason this vibrated too much and it kind of which i don't think it would if it slides out the channel would catch this little groove here at the end of the pin and again this would just stay in place i think for the most part if you push it all the way in like so it'll just be there because it's only going to move whenever you uh, actuate the handle for opening the uh, the door okay so what i am going to do is start getting the replacement door handle ready and the first thing is going to be to set up this retainer for the rod and all you have to do is once you have it somewhat aligned there you want to hook the the rod through both sides and then you want to secure the, the retainer onto the the rod and that really ensures that this is not going to be falling off uh, like it usually happens with these parts and it's uh, unnecessary you you have to have the right uh, retainer installed so another thing that uh, you have to install is the this, you know this one must be aftermarket this is a very thin gasket goes in between the the door handle and the door and I have an old original gasket and you can tell immediately this is much more uh, it's it's thicker and it will hold its its shape a lot uh, better.
I also um, sprayed a little bit of WD-40 in here, the hinge, the spring, and I removed the rod and I applied a generous amount of lithium grease here just to, you know, not only lubricate that part, but also to prevent corrosion. And the same thing here inside the, uh, the lever and the uh, arm that pushes the, uh, the lever out. So again, maybe a little bit overkill, but I, I think it, it helps prevent corrosion and keep things, you know, operating smoothly. So I may add a dab down here as well for the same reasons. I also cleaned and polished around the door handle to eliminate any stains and, and stuff. Um, eventually I'm gonna come back and uh, give it a, a proper polish and, and cleaning. But uh, for the time being, this is looking a lot better. Another thing I did, and you can see the, uh, <laughs> the end result there. I sprayed some, um, actually some engine degreaser onto the, um, the door latch and a few small areas in there. The reason being is because I believe things that are grimy and dirty do not work well. So when uh, this is kind of somewhat dry, what I'll do is I'll give it a good coating of this silicone spray by Liquid Wrench. And uh, that should keep everything moving freely and, and properly. Okay, so what I have to do next is get this clip installed back here on this end. And it is not hard to do like I showed earlier. The thing is, what is hard to do is getting your hands in here. And you gotta just feel your way and hope that you do not, do not drop it. And that's why I like to keep the, um, that power window motor cover uh, out in case I have to go fishing for it again, so. And as, I don't know if you can see, but uh, I got it somewhat started. And now, forgive me, I know all you can see is the back of my hand here. I just wanna push it all the way in so it's, uh, it's ready to receive the, uh, the little clevis pin on the uh, other end of the door handle rod. And that would be then connected. Also, when you are putting this back into place, Make sure that the uh, this end here is connected to the lever extension from the tumbler. So everything will work when you turn the key to lock or unlock the door. Okay, let's see how this part goes. You can see the rod here. But this rod has to go behind the um, has to go behind the uh, lock and lock tumbler there that that uh, lever. So we're gonna have to So what I'm trying to do is get this out enough, far enough, so I can actually route this rod with a clevis pin behind the, behind the tumbler. And then from dropping the, uh, the handle back in and look at that. That is uh, perfect. So next, I am going to somehow show you what it is that I'm doing. See, the clevis pin is pretty much where it needs to be, but I have to make sure that it's centered over the first hole 
from the far end of the lever and push it in. And of course, there's no way, I don't have a tiny little camera to uh, bring in there to even begin to show you how this thing works. I have it right on top of the uh, where it needs to go. There we go. Pushed it all in and it's locked in place. So now if I push the door handle, it is working as it should. Beautiful. That wasn't too bad actually. Not bad at all. Okay, so now that the door handle is in, I'm going to try to bring this nut all the way back here. And trust me, you can do it. Just, just take your time and make sure that you have a good hold up on it so you can start one or two threads. And once you get that started, it will stay in there. So that nut is in place. There is another one there. Same drill. Get your hand in there and carefully start threading the nut into place. And with your 11 millimeter open end wrench, reach in there and start tightening that that nut all the way. Let's use the socket. Nice. Okay. That is properly secure. We're in place, so we're good. I'm gonna get my silicone spray, give this a good a good bath, call it done. Okay, so before I forget this thing, I have to reinstall this, this retainer here. It's all the way in, and now we can lock the, uh, the retainer back in place. Wow. Okay, so everything is connected here, here. The lock and lock tumbler is connected. It's still somewhat loose, but uh, again, I'm in the process of tightening all the uh, nuts and bolts and stuff. That's all she needs. And still have this thing. I'll remove the screws. Alrighty, let's try to get this shield back in here. I have no idea if, it, if this would be easier with the window up, but I got it out this way, so let's try it. And if not, we'll just have to keep investigating. Once you fold it a little bit, gently, of course, you can get this thing to uh, to go back in there. And then we have a screw right here. And another one from back here. Provided everything is aligned properly, of course, you may have to move it a little bit. There it goes. And once you get them started, you can actually snug them up enough so they will not go anywhere. Good. And even gooder. Next, I have to reinstall the cover. I'm gonna give it a little extra attention on the workbench, but that's gonna be next. And I guess in the meantime, we can test the um, door handle operation.
Okay. So this is looking better now and it's, it is working well. Now, I still have to do a couple of things. I want to clean, don't ask me how, but they decided to, I guess they got rid of the uh, vapor barrier and uh, it was probably destroyed. And uh, that's why one day installed a new motor. And instead of making one, they just decided to put this white uh, butyl rope all around here, here, and it ended up all around the edges of the door. It was a freaking mess. So I spent a good, I don't know, 30 minutes cleaning. You can still see some of the remnants here. I mean, they really went to town with that stuff. So I cleaned it up off of the uh, the door panel. So this is ready to be reinstalled. But um, yeah, it was a nightmare. And I still have to clean all of this. I don't want this to look like that. So I'm gonna do that, reattach the cover and reinstall the door panel. This is working now with my Funker repairs, but they work. I was unable to re to remove the um, the sport mirrors because of this nut back here. Uh, it's uh, it's a pain in the neck. But anyway, this is almost done, and um, so yeah, looking good.